And I used to think that surviving Canadian winters made you tough, but that's nothing compared to these stories. So throughout history, there have been countless tales of human perseverance against all odds. I mean, let's be honest, that's what half of Hollywood movies are about. But today, we're not talking about fiction. No, this is not Tom Hanks and a volleyball on an island somewhere. There have been some real life survivors who have demonstrated the tenacity that it takes to stay alive under some of the worst conditions. Some lost at sea, some have been presumed dead or trapped in storms known as death zones, and there was even one woman who fell straight out of the sky. So get ready because I've gathered for you the most incredible and unlikely daring survival stories of all time. So without further ado, here they are. 10 people who survived against all odds. Number one is Julianne Kopeck. Julianne Kopeck is the sole survivor of the 93 passengers and crew from Lanza Flight 503 that crashed and left her stranded alone in the Peruvian rainforest. On December 24th, 1971, her plane was struck by lightning and exploded in mid-air. Kopeck, who was only 17 years old at the time, fell thousands of meters still trapped in her seat. The thick, deep jungle canopy was the only thing that cushioned her fall, which allowed her to survive with only a broken collarbone a gash to her right arm and her right eye swollen shut. Kopeck had no training or gear, but instinct kicked in and she began to follow a small stream that she had found. She continued to follow through the rainforest for nine days, avoiding run-ins with anacondas, six meter long crocodiles, and the orifice eating leeches that call this rainforest home. She finally found a canoe and a nearby shelter where she waited and unbelievably was rescued by two loggers. See, I wouldn't have been able to survive that. Not just because I don't even know how to cook myself dinner, let alone eat random things in the Peruvian rainforest, but if I saw one single tarantula, I just, closest clip, me, just, that would've been it. It just went over. I'm not, I'm not dealing with tarantulas. Number two is John Coulter. John Coulter was an American trapper and guide who had traveled through the then unknown regions of North America. In 1808, 700 Blackfeet Indians killed Coulter's travel companion and then held counsel on what to do with him. They soon stripped him of all of his clothes and all of his possessions and then told him to run, which made him clearly realize that he was the object of a human hunt. Coulter, quick on his feet, managed to run several kilometers and even evaded most of the group, but one bloodthirsty native gained on him. Turning and facing him, Coulter killed him with his own spear and took his blanket. He then took to hiding in a beaver dam of all things until he was able to escape the area undetected. For the next 11 days, he walked a total of 320 kilometers to Fort Raymond in North Dakota with only the blanket for warmth and roots for food. Okay, this is proof that the generations before us were a lot tougher. My biggest struggle is often where to order in food from. There's a lot of options. Number three is Douglas Mawson. Douglas Mawson was an Australian scientist who, at the beginning of the 20th century, set out on a mission to explore Antarctica. But on December 14, 1912, one of Mawson's colleagues fell into a crevice, dragging their sled, their supplies, and most of their dogs down with him. But the worst part about it is that ahead of Mawson was a 500 kilometer journey. In order to survive, they actually had to eat the one remaining dog, and his other colleague died from exhaustion, but Mawson pushed forward. He suffered conjunctivitis and frostbite so bad that his skin, hair, and the soles of his feet began to fall off. <laughs> On top of that, he himself then fell into a crevice and was dangling helplessly over an arctic abyss. Amazingly, he was ultimately able to pull himself up and finally, after 32 days, reached his hut. And it's lucky he got there when he did because the only boat out of Antarctica departed shortly after Mawson arrived, which, if he didn't make it on that boat, would have made him wait another 10 months to get back to civilization. Oh, 10 months in the cold, that really sucks. Welcome to Canada. Number four is the Gremlin Special Passengers. On May 13th, 1945, a U.S. Army Air Force C-47, nicknamed the Gremlin Special, crashed into a mountainside in what is now known as the Shangri-La Valley in New Guinea. The plane was carrying 24 crew members and passengers, but out of all of them, only three survived. Lieutenant John Malcolm, Corporal Margaret Hastings, and Sergeant Kenneth Decker all had varying degrees of injuries. They soon found themselves in a sort of modern Stone Age culture, untouched by the outside world. What's most 
disturbing is that the natives that were around them were cannibals who enjoyed a free meal of the other 21 who had died. Luckily for the survivors, the natives did not turn on them. Amazingly, on July 2nd, 1945, after having spent 42 days in the jungle, worried about their new native friends who might get hungry again, the three survivors escaped to an island via a rescue team. Okay, now listen, you gotta remember, if you're ever stranded on an island and you're forced to eat someone to mix in with the cannibals, go for the butt first. There's a lot of meat on the butt. Go for the butt. Number five is Stephen Callahan. On the night of January 29th, 1982, Stephen Callahan set sail alone in a small sailboat from the Canary Islands bound for the Caribbean. However, on February 5th, the ship sank in a storm, leaving Callahan adrift in the Atlantic on a one and a half meter inflatable rubber raft. Naked, except for just a shirt with only three pounds of food, a few pieces of gear, and eight pints of water, Callahan drifted for an incredible 76 days. After traveling across an amazing 3,000 kilometers of ocean, the man was so dehydrated that he went mildly insane and developed a split personality where he would actually fight himself over the rations of water. No, Wilson, you don't get the water, I do. But I want the water. After an incredible two and a half months lost at sea, he finally reached land in the Bahamas. Developing a split personality doesn't really sound that bad. I mean, you'd always have a friend around, you'd have someone to play video games with, and you'd never actually ever have to give up the controller. So it sounds like an ideal situation, kind of. Number six is Ricky McGee. On January 24th, 2006, Ricky McGee was cruising down an isolated road in the Australian outback when his car was hijacked by three Aboriginal men. As if that wasn't bad enough, they drugged him and dumped his body in the middle of the desert. Unaware and confused as to where he was, he woke up to Dingo scratching at him in his shallow grave. Amazingly, McGee managed to make a camp near a water dam by building a shelter out of twigs and branches. This is the place that he called home for the next three months, surviving on raw leeches, grasshoppers, frogs, and cockroaches. Yeah. Luckily, he was found just before death, where he resembled basically a really tanned walking skeleton. You gotta be real desperate to eat grasshoppers, raw leeches, frogs, and cockroaches. Oh my god. Unless you're into that type of thing and you like the popping sound they make. Number seven is Aaron Ralston. If this name is kind of familiar to you, it's because you probably recognize it from the film 127 Hours. Aaron Ralston was a climber who was forced to amputate his right arm with a dull knife in order to free himself from between a 362 kilogram boulder and a rock wall back in 2003. <laughs> After five full days, he had no water, no food, and he even had to drink his own urine just to survive. Unbelievably, after several days alone and starving, he finally walked out of the canyon near death minus one arm. Oh my God, it takes a lot to saw off your own arm. You gotta be desperate. I mean, I get a single paper cut and I'm like, ah, paper cut, ah, hospital, ah. Overacting 101. Yes, yes, you're welcome. Number eight is Beck Weathers. Like so many others before him, Beck Weathers aspired to conquer Mount Everest. But timing wasn't exactly on his side as he ascended the mountain during the deadliest season ever in the history of Mount Everest. The storm was so bad that his rescue missions were abandoned twice and eventually Weathers was presumed dead. He spent 18 hours in sub-zero temperatures in the death zone before miraculously regaining his senses and staggering into a camp. Suffering from severe frostbite, corneal lacerations, and hypothermia, Thermia, his face was so badly frostbitten that it scarcely resembled that of even a human being. But unbelievably, he did survive. I give all the respect and credit in the world to this guy, but I can't help but wonder what the reaction of the people in the camp were that saw him stumble in. <laughs> Number nine is John McCain. On October 26, 1967, Lieutenant Commander John McCain was shot down by a missile over Vietnam. While trying to eject from the aircraft, he fractured both his arms and a leg and almost drowned. Then, North Vietnamese residents pulled him ashore where they crushed his shoulder and bayoneted him. <laughs> As if that wasn't bad enough, he was then transported to a prison where his captors refused to treat his injuries and proceeded to beat him. Following his interrogation, he was placed in solitary confinement for two whole years where he would receive daily beatings. In mid-1968, he was then offered release and where most people would say, yes, yes, let me out now, 
he actually only said he would accept it if every man taken before him was also released. And on March 14th, 1973, after over five years of torture and solitary confinement, he was released. And number 10 is Hugh Glass. Hugh Glass was a mountain man on a fur trapping expedition on August of 1823. Unfortunately for Glass, he surprised a mother grizzly bear with her two cubs and sustained a broken leg and a cut on his back that exposed his ribs. But unbelievably, he was actually able to kill the bear, but was left badly mauled and unconscious. Those who were traveling with him were certain that he would not survive his injuries, so they buried him alive. And more than 320 kilometers from civilization, Glass set his his own broken leg, wrapped himself in bear, and started to crawl to safety. To prevent gangrene, Glass laid his wounded back on a rotting log and let the maggots eat his dead flesh. Oh, this is getting gross. He survived mostly on wild berries and roots, and after six weeks of travel, built himself a crude raft and began floating downriver. And after receiving directions from friendly natives, he eventually made it to safety. If this story sounds familiar, that's because it's the story from the 2015 Leonardo DiCaprio film, The Revenant. Wait, are all Hollywood movies based on a true life story? Does that include the human centipede? And that's all for this video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can catch my next video, and I will see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Love your faces. Bye. Eh.